The following video is an excerpt from Investigating Mac OS Endpoints. Visit training.13cubed.com today to learn more about this and other comprehensive and affordable training courses from 13 Cubed. And now, let's learn how to use Fuji. We're currently on the Mac from which we want to create a disk image. As of right now, there are no external drives connected to it, but we're about to change that. I'm going to plug in a one terabyte USB flash drive. So let me do that now, and after a few seconds, it should appear on the desktop, and you can see it right here. You'll notice that I've labeled the drive Fuji, and that's because by default, Fuji is going to try to write the disk image that we're about to create to volumes slash Fuji. So if you go ahead and prepare your external media by labeling it Fuji, it just makes things much easier. Now on this flash drive, the only thing that's here is fujiapp.dmg, which is the package that I've downloaded directly from the Fuji repo. So let's go ahead and double click on this to open the disk image. And after a few seconds, we should see the Fuji disk image here. Of course, this is the application itself. We've got a license here, and then we've got full disk access settings listed here. Now this is going to be very important. We need to click this URL, which is a shortcut that's going to open up system settings and take us directly to the full disk access location. What we need to do is drag the Fuji app icon into this location and then we'll go ahead and authenticate here, and notice that now Fuji has full disk access. Again, that's going to be very important, because without that step, Fuji is not going to be able to create a disk image. Okay, so let's close system settings, and at this point, we can go ahead and launch Fuji. Of course, we're being prompted for a password here, so let me type that in, and once we type in the password, you'll notice we now have the Fuji window. Let me go ahead and close the windows behind it so it makes it a little bit easier to see, and now we're looking at Fuji. So let's take a tour. At the top, we've got some metadata that we can populate, such as the case name, the examiner, and the notes. Now this is completely optional and you don't have to place anything there unless you want to. Notice we have the image name listed here, which can be changed, but by default, it's going to be the serial number of the Mac that you're imaging, followed by an underscore and the word acquisition with a capital A. Now, like I said, we could change this to anything that we want but I often just keep it exactly as it is because the serial number is obviously a great unique identifier for this Mac. Next up, we have the source, which by default is just forward slash or the root of the volume. Now we can click browse here and specify a specific directory if we wanted to, but let's click cancel because the other option we have here is to click list of drives and partitions. You'll notice by default that the disk three S1 S1 APFS snapshot is currently selected and you'll notice the mount point is forward slash or root. So that is the volume that we want to image. Now we could alternatively choose only the data volume if we wanted to do that, but I'm going to go with the defaults and choose forward slash or root for the entire volume. So let's go ahead and close this window and go back to Fuji. And the next thing we have is the temp image location. This is referring to the sparse image that Fuji is going to create. Behind the scenes, it creates the sparse image, and then from that image, it creates the DMG. So as I mentioned in the first part of this lesson, it's going to create two disk images by default. Just know that the temp image is referring to the sparse image. And notice that it's already populated as volumes Fuji, as I said, which is going to be great because our external media is named Fuji. For the DMG destination, it's currently set to the same value. So you do have the option of writing the sparse image and the DMG image to two different locations if you wanted to do that. Then we've got the acquisition method. Notice we've got ASR, which is the default. That's the Apple Software Restore, which is a built-in Mac OS utility. If for some reason that failed, you can fall back to rsync. rsync is going to be very efficient for grabbing files and directories, but it's not going to be a full logical acquisition. This is not going to be ideal for most use cases, but if you have no other option and you can't get ASR to work, then this would be a good fallback. Sysdiagnose is only going to grab system data and unified logs. And to be honest, this isn't an option that I ever use, but it's nice to know it's here if we need it. So I'm just going to go back up to ASR and click that and go with the defaults. The only other thing here is the checkbox that says play loud sound when acquisition is completed, which I also leave checked. So the takeaway here is I don't really change much of anything. I leave Fuji exactly as it is at the default settings, at least in most cases. So that's all there is to it. All we have to do at this point is click continue. And once we do that, you're going to notice that we get a window that says acquisition overview. 
So it's going to show us the case name, examiner, and notes if we populated that. It's going to show us the image name, the source, the temp image location, which as I said, is the sparse image, the DMG destination, which is the same, the acquisition method, which is the default of ASR. It is going to play a sound when the process completes. And then you can see some checks at the bottom. Notice in red, it says the Mac is connected to the internet. In some cases, you may want to disconnect the Mac depending on the circumstances of your case. For this demo, of course, it doesn't really matter and the Mac can remain connected to the internet. But all I'm going to do at this point is click confirm. And once I do that, you're going to see that we get the acquisition in progress window. Now, obviously this is going to take a variable amount of time. That's going to depend on how big the source volume is and the speed of the destination media to which you're writing the image. In this case, our source drive is 512 gigabytes and our destination drive is a one terabyte USB flash drive that's not exactly the fastest thing, but it works. Now, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch all of this, so we'll come back when it's done and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I came back later the same evening and as you can see, the Fuji window is still opened and in green text at the top, it says acquisition completed. That's exactly what we want to see. Now let's open the Fuji volume and within it, you're going to notice we have an acquisition folder. Remember that by default, it's going to be named the serial number of the Mac and underscore and then acquisition. Now, if we open this folder, you're going to notice three files that are also named in the same way. We've got the DMG disk image right here. We've got the sparse image right here. And then we've got a text file which contains information about the acquisition itself. And by the way, I'll press the space bar to preview that file. And as you can see, it records the version of Fuji that was used, the start and end time of the acquisition, the source, the acquisition method, and then below that, we've got quite a bit of software and hardware information about the Mac from which the image was acquired. So everything you need is going to be right here in this folder. And that's how easy it is to use Fuji.